The U.S. military role in Iraq appears to be deepening with another round of airstrikes today targeting ISIS militants who have taken control of a key dam. This after a week of attacks to free religious refugees under siege by the terror group. And now more than 100 additional U.S. troops are on the ground. And this all begs the question, are we going back to Iraq or have we already gone back to Iraq? Mark Dubowitz is the executive director of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. I want to start with this. How difficult is it to stop one of these missions once they began? You know, a couple of months ago, it was advisors. Then it became advisors and equipment. Now it's advisors, equipment and airstrikes, plus more advisors. How do you put the brakes on something like this? Well, I think, Leland, the reality is it's, it's not mission creep. This mission was never over, and everybody acknowledged that except the president. The fact of the matter is that the president's decision not to leave a residual force, a U.S. military force in Iraq, his decision not to support Sunni moderates, has really created this, uh, this crisis, and the president has been mugged by reality. I think that the, our role in Iraq will only deepen. Assuming that it only deepens, to what point do you finally say the Iraqis have to deal with it on their own? Or is this a situation where at some point the Iraq was broken and the only way to hold it together is with U.S. military power? Look, I think Iraq and Syria, I mean, they are sort of a Middle East version of Game of Thrones on steroids. I mean, I don't think we're ever going to be able to fix Iraq or fix Syria. I think the primary objective right now is to destroy this, this Islamic State, this terrorist organization that actually has taken hold of territory the size of New England with oil revenues and captured military equipment. We've got to destroy the Islamic State before it comes and destroys us. Well, obviously, President Obama has taken real credit, or at least he did in the past, for ending the war in Iraq. And we obviously have seen the promises that have come out from the administration saying no boots on the ground. And you can parse those words however you want. In many ways, there are American boots on the ground, at least so far the administration says they're not involved in fighting. Would it be better to simply say, all right, we're going all back in. This is an all in mission once again, rather than kind of PC it out over time? Look, I think that's going to be the reality. I don't think the president can bring himself to actually acknowledge that. I mean, I think in the next two and a half years, his primary mission, as I said, will to be to destroy this Islamic State. I don't think it's possible to do that without American boots on the ground. I think that there should have been 10,000 American soldiers left there as a residual force, which I think could have perhaps prevented what we are seeing unfold now. I think we may actually end up getting back to exactly that situation before uh, the inauguration of the next president. Speaking of the inauguration of the next president, how is this going to play into the, not only the midterms, but also the presidential election coming up in 2016? It seems as though if you're look, listening to politicians who on both sides of the aisle are trying to position themselves for the race coming up, it's a much more hawkish approach than what we've seen from the president, a la Hillary Clinton's latest statements. Well, exactly, Lynn. I mean, I think everybody is going to be running away from this president. Uh, and you see Hillary already doing so. I mean, she's already coming out and making it very clear that she disagreed with the president on Syria, she disagreed with him on Iraq, she's disagreed with him now on Gaza. I think it's become very clear that the president's foreign policy, at least the, the perception is, is that it's failing, his popularity is, is plummeting, I think Democrats are going to be running to the right of him, though it does open up the possibility that somebody like Elizabeth Warren may run to the left of Hillary Clinton in order to try get the progressive vote. As you're there in Washington, do you get the feeling that both Republicans and Democrats are going to begin using this as a political football? Or if President Obama were to make a major policy shift and say, OK, I'm going to take my medicine. I was wrong. We're going back to Iraq. Would both sides of the aisle support him in actually taking care of ISIS once and for all? I think so. I think the sort of center left and center right would support him. I mean, I think the, the, the sort of far left and the far right are going to criticize those decisions. But I think everybody is acknowledging in the center, in the reasonable center, that ISIS represents a significant national security threat and something has to be done. If the president can shift that decision making, you know, he can make a mea culpa and he can actually go back in force to try and deal with a problem he should have dealt with a couple of years ago. I think he'll see support on both sides of the aisle. Well, we will wait and see if that happens. I suspect, though, you would tell us that we should probably be prepared to wait for a while. Mark Dubowitz from the Foundation for Defense of Democracies in Washington, thanks for joining us.